I'm Paul Aiello. I'm a uh, the director of the Sales and Solutions Development Organization. And what we want to talk to you about this morning is how to grow your business using our advanced recognition systems. Over the last couple of days, hopefully you all had the opportunity to go to the expo and see some of the technology that was in place, play with it, uh, work with Jason and Paul and the others who are manning the kiosks. And so what you saw there was a lot of innovation, what the future holds for all of us. And so, you know, for us, the future is now. The organization's been working very, very hard to make sure that our biometrics, our facial recognition, some of our advanced security products are ready to be deployed to the channel. And so we've been working on the contract amendments and the documents and other things there, and you'll be hearing more about that as we go forward. So what I'm going to cover is several of our uh, products being the NeoFace Welcome, as well as the IAPRO product and a little bit about the future. And then I'm going to hand it over to Eric Hess, who's going to talk to you and walk you through some use cases for um, NeoFace Watch. NeoFace is a facial recognition technology that's been developed in the labs at NEC. Since 2010, NeoFace has been independently tested as number one for speed and accuracy. We've applied the technology for our own use for visitor registration. The old process is you walk in and you sign in and then you're given a visitor badge and then you're allowed access to the facility. So we took that process to a whole new level. What we wanted to do was create a wow factor for people who understand that they're coming to a new facility for NEC. It's a new building, a new company, a new way of looking at things. We redeployed our biometrics technology and included that as part of our visitor registration. So as they approach our receptionists, if they are known, our receptionists can greet them by name. If they're not known, our receptionists will see that on their screen and our reception staff can then direct them to register. For a second time visitor, that is a much cleaner process. They just walk up to the desk, a receptionist can see who they are, recognise them, badge is printed and they're off. And more importantly, it's a greeting by name. Really what we were very pleased was the reaction from the staff. Immediately on entry, they're greeted with technology. This is NEC technology. The door opens based on your face. But more importantly, I think, as people start to get used to it, it's just the sheer convenience of it. It's interesting to see the adoption rate because we have two options. You can either use your card or your face. What we've found is 90 to 100% of the staff don't bother with their badge. They do it if they forget, but generally, everyone's so used to just coming in, standing there, and the door opens. Good morning, Eric. Access granted. The Welcome Kiosk is really part of what we call industry ecosystems. It's built on top of the biometrics technology that we use for our receptionist application for visitor management. What it does is by recognising you coming up to the kiosk, we can pre-program interactions and take actions. Hello Eric, welcome to the official opening of NEC Australia's new headquarters. We recently, as a demonstration, used it to just print labels for a barista at a CIA conference to show the capability of the kiosk. What's actually come out from that is there is actually is a need in terms of retail. You can now be recognised, your preferences are known, you can choose very quickly, and with the capability of payment, that can all be transacted in a kiosk, and that process is all done just by walking in and literally using your face. So that whole process has a productivity improvement, but also, more importantly, it sets a new benchmark in customer experience. There are endless possibilities, and we ourselves are just coming to terms with what's possible using this technology. So hopefully through that video, it gives you an idea of some of the capabilities and some of the advanced technology that you can deploy NeoFace Welcome at. You saw at the kiosk several applications where uh, we're using a UT880 for that particular front desk feature. There's different things that we can do using the NEC technology. And as you saw, uh, the alert message of your visitor or your guest has arrived, things like that pull it all back in to the smart enterprise. It pulls it back into telephony, your telephone instrument, your network are all still an important backbone and part of the overall NeoFace platform. 
Additionally, on the uh, technology front, we have an advanced analytics image uh, processing system called IA Pro. And what IA Pro does, it essentially allows you to do learning of a facility for anomaly recognition. So I can geofence, I can take an area where we don't expect traffic and we don't expect people, and so it'll proactively monitor that area using a customer's existing video system. So it allows you to uh, track the anomaly rather than just having a security guard watching monitors all day. It can track an object being left that shouldn't be there. It can track somebody crossing over a fence or intrusion in an area where they shouldn't. And one of the areas over the last several months that we've gotten a lot of traction in talking to people, kind of bring it back to the, uh, the storytelling from, from yesterday, is the idea of uh, man down or trip and fall. You talk to a customer who's got escalators, who has um, high traffic areas, stadiums, areas where people push and they shove and they rush. Everybody's got a story about how much it cost them when somebody's fallen down a flight of stairs or somebody tripped and fell on an escalator. Or even worse, the fact that somebody claimed that they had that issue. And this way, using an IA Pro, you're able to actually track the anomaly, point it out, and dispute the claim. Moving forward, in addition to the NeoFace products and the IA Pro, we're also currently working on a complete IoT-based analytics platform that'll be ready hopefully sometime later this year that will allow you to also do things like dwell time so you can track how long somebody stays in front of a retail location or if they're loitering at a doorway. It can do demographics by age and sex and alter the, uh, the content that's displayed on a, on a monitor or a screen. Um, and it'll also incorporate in with that all of the facial recognition. And I would welcome any of you who happen to be in the Las Vegas area to give us a call uh, and set up an appointment to come by the Technovation Center in Las Vegas where we have all of this technology actually deployed, including the welcome kiosk. So, but all of this is really built on the NeoFace watch algorithm, which is something that uh, NEC has just received incredible accolades for. You want to talk about innovation, recognition in the industry space, it's all about NeoFace Watch. That happens to be the driver for all of this. And I'd like to introduce Eric Hess, who, Eric is the global director for pre-sales efforts for NeoFace Watch, and he's going to walk you through some business cases and how to grow your revenue using NeoFace Watch. Eric? Thanks, Paul. Thank you, sir. Well, welcome, everybody. This is just about the end, isn't it? Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the great couple of days. Before I get started, I'd love to see sort of a show of hands. How many uh, dealers and partners do we have here still? Good, good, good. How many salespeople are not on the golf course? Let's see your hands. All right, all right. Good to know as well. We're going to get started. We're going to talk a little bit about NEC and NEC's NeoFace Watch facial recognition platform, which is a facial recognition platform that is driving many of the demonstrations that you saw in the expo this week. How many of you saw NeoFace Watch, saw the face recognition happening? Or maybe you saw NeoFace Welcome, the avatar that could recognize you if you were enrolled, and if you weren't enrolled, it could recognize your age and gender, queue up advertising, or actually um, dive right into conversations that were uh, uh, appropriate for the individuals that were there. Some pretty cool and innovative technology that was seen. I'm going to start off, though, with a little advertisement. This talks about some of the problems that our customers face today. Let's see what this guy's up to. Do you know which security technology is behind the scenes? The world's best face recognition technology from NEC authenticates faces in an instant. NEC helps safeguard people, businesses, and society. Orchestrating a brighter world, NEC. Now what do you think about this poor guy? Did you see his face, right? Was he excited to be there? No, how many days? He's probably on like day three, and he's already thinking, how am I going to survive doing this job, right? I'm standing there. I'm supposed to be looking for, for bad people, people that are of concern, 
but the only thing they've given me to look at are a few faces on paper in the back aisle, right? And then there's the distraction, right? I mean, was he really looking at everybody coming through the turnstiles? No, I mean, there was a distraction there. And then there was the pretty lady as well. You thought the distraction was the pretty lady. No, it was the coffee spill, right? What are some of the things that these security guards have to do? They're looking out for safety, and it comes in all form and fashion, right? They've got so much to do, it's impossible for us to actually think that they're going to accomplish it all on their own without the use of technology. And so Neil Face Watch is one of those technologies that was operating there. In each of those turnstiles, taking a look at the faces coming in, making sure that the individuals entering into that facility are actually the individuals with the proper credentials. So just one way that Neil Face Watch can, can assist some of the jobs that are sometimes mundane today. But before I move on, I've got a little uh, in audience interaction, a little something fun. Um, can I get uh, a volunteer, please? It's very short. Come on, someone jump up. There we go, perfect. Now this is, uh, is gonna be pretty easy, actually. Yeah, right over here. Come on up. All right, and I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. I'm Michelle Polvado with NEC and Mark Hebner's team. Fantastic, Michelle. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, Michelle, is I'm gonna show you four photos, okay. four images. And you haven't seen yeah. this yet, no? Yeah. Okay. Four images. And at the end of seeing all four images, I wanna know what the one, one word, the one thought comes to mind that links them together, okay? So this first one, how many people know this guy? Right, Tim Cook. A little company called Apple, right? You're familiar with Apple? Yeah, I'm familiar with Okay. <laughs> we got this one. Now, people might say it's Mickey Mouse. Well, no. <laughs> Joe Iger, I believe, is who's currently at the helm, but it's Walt Disney. You've watched Disney movies? Yes. Great. What's your favorite one? I would say Mary Poppins. Oh, I love that. <laughs> cool. And then, of course, now, it's a little bit obvious what this guy's name is, right? Elon Musk. Um, young guy comes in, shows them all up, right? He gets creative not with one company, but two simultaneously, right? Tesla and SpaceX, all right. And now for our fourth one, who's this? Shin. Yeah, this is Shin <laughs> Takahashi-san, the CEO of NEC of America. Now you've just seen those four images. Mm -hmm. What word comes to mind? Leaders. Leaders, that's a great one. Uh, leaders of very large companies that are very successful that have been around a long time. Great, great. Frank, did I hear you say something over there? <laughs> I, I think I heard you. Frank say, good looking CEOs. Oh, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> Frank, you're retiring. You don't have to play that card anymore, okay? But no, you, you're right when you said it. It's actually innovation. Oh, so okay. fantastic. Wonderful, thank you, Michelle, all right. Innovation, okay. NEC, Walt Disney, Apple, Tesla, SpaceX, right? We are listed as one of the world's 50 most innovative companies. And that is actually really, really impressive when you think that NEC is 109 years old. And this recognition of innovation was in large part because of our facial recognition technologies that we've been bringing to, uh, to market today. Now, that innovation started almost 30 years ago. It's a lot of work to bring truly industry-changing, market-changing technologies to market. And unlike Apple, which, you know, they went alone, they did it all by themselves, they have the completely closed environment, we've actually done this in, in an open way using a wide range of technologies that are available today, supporting our partners, waiting for the nexus of all this technology, the hardware, our technologies coming out, the machine vision, et cetera. And we have actually brought to market today the number one facial recognition matching platform in the world. Now, you might say, wait a second, who's measuring this? Well, NIST. NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technologies. 
It's part of the US Department of Commerce. And their whole reason to be is to help spur innovation. It's to help drive industry development here in the US. And they do scientifically based, peer reviewed, double blind objective proofs of concept, benchmarks on different technologies. They take a year to put these technologies through the ringers. And they've come out. And ever since NEC started uh, participating in 2009, NEC's Neoface technology has ranked number one. So that's pretty fantastic. A 109-year-old company coming up with, uh, with uh, industry-changing technology and remaining the number one provider for the last seven years. And there's a lot of people out there that are trying to do this. But nobody does it as good as NEC. Now, it's not just NIST that's pointing this out. Frost and Sullivan said, hey, it's not only the technology, but it's the best practices. It's how NEC is bringing this technology to market, how we're deploying it to meet our customer needs, and how we're providing the people and the support to make sure you're getting the value out of the technology that you need. And so Frost and Sullivan, they do these awards every few years. Um, I really love this one. Uh, celebrated the achievements, best in class companies. Uh, John Dowden, one of our senior product managers, uh, attended from uh, NEC, and he joined the upper echelons of industry stalwarts. Well, I kind of like to think that some of those other guys joined the upper echelons with us, right? So that's Frost and Sullivan saying best practices. Let's go ahead and see a little bit about Frost and Sullivan. want to help in terms of identifying and helping to tell the story that you guys have developed. And so we work really hard to tell your story from a third party perspective uh, to the rest of the world. Many people always say that participating it's almost like winning, but you know, I don't know about you guys, but you know, winning this is pretty good actually. So I would like to recognize the analysts that we have because uh, it's, it's those 2,000 analysts that are tracking various markets and people that are, that are uh, making a dent in the universe. Yeah, my whole family is with me. My wife, daughter, and my son. He was absolutely, uh, what should I say, excited to be present. And he said he never realized that, you know, the industry would recognize his dad's work. And that's going to be, you guys, in the next year or two. Your kids and your family members are going to say, I never really realized what you were doing, but I get it now. It's really cool stuff. And it is changing the way we see the world today. Moving on. So what is this actual platform? Neoface Watch is the most accurate and fastest platform for facial recognition. We can consume streaming video, identify all the faces in that video, match them against very large data sets, and return the information about persons of concern, whether that be somebody who's dangerous or your boss just walked in, right? I mean, that raises concern for some people. But we can enable all of those things with streaming video. We can also do that with static images. Matter of fact, we not only can do it, we have been doing it. So we now have over 200 customers around the world who have deployed Neoface Watch systems to enhance security and protect individuals within uh, their properties and their borders. We have deployments in over 46 countries today, over 30 airports. We have one customer who has deployed over 800 cameras and is running facial recognition on those simultaneously. We have another customer that's concerned with border security. And so one of the things they're doing is every individual that passes through uh, passport and immigration control, et cetera, they automatically capture an image of that person's face. So if something happens, such as Brussels in Belgium, Ataturk in Turkey, 
in Thailand, in Boston, in Paris, in London, if those things happen again, they have the means to go back and speed the investigations to determine who might be involved. Where do we start in this haystack? Which needle is it that we pull out first? And so Neoface Watch is doing this today. We're a little bit behind the curve here in North America, but the nice thing about that, you've got huge opportunity. And that's what we're trying to uh, kickstart this year by bringing this technology to our dealers. So a couple of things you can do with Neoface Watch. First is real-time surveillance. You can monitor those video streams. The platform will automatically detect all of the faces in the field of view, and then it can submit those for a search against a database of enrolled images, okay? So this is very high performance, high accuracy. It can be used in crowded environments. So CCTV feeds, um, smart devices, those can all provide that video to be processed. Now another use case, another feature of NeoFace Watch is that it can process offline files. It's not cost effective to run face recognition all the time on every single camera, right? But it is cost effective to either be able to say, process this camera now, then process that camera. Oh, wait, something happened yesterday. I wonder if it happened the day before, the day before that, and the day before that. Let's process that video that we've recorded and see if the guy that we caught for shoplifting today was here shoplifting yesterday, or the day before, or the day before. And so you can build your case on what has happened historically by using this technology. Identity verification. Now I should mention that part of those 30 airports is another company just like you that has adopted the NeoFace Watch platform. And it's using the API to be able to enable the automated border control gates that are being deployed in many of the airports around the world. You may be using some of those here in the US as well. So you walk up, you've just flown in on an international flight, and you pull out your passport and you put it down, and their gates read the RFID chip, the embedded JPEG image of your face. They use NeoFace Watch to compare the face in the camera standing right there, and they validate, yes, indeed, the person holding the passport is the person that was issued to, and you go right on. And so these gates are being deployed around the world. Indeed, you can now fast track from London walking into one of the train tunnels, use your passport, validate right there, get on a train, you pop out the other side of the channel in France. So lots of new uh, technology there, identity verification. I can think of many other industries uh, where that could be used as well, healthcare, perhaps education. We can talk about that in a moment. Crowdflow management, this is another one. So we match faces that are in a database, right? Well, how do you build that database? There's a couple of different ways. You can use the images that you've already collected over time, or you can set up one camera to automatically capture all the faces passing by, automatically enroll those in a database, and then when I walk by that next camera and we do that facial recognition match, we can tell how long it's taking you to go from point A to point B. And so this is great information for different types of businesses that need to understand their operational efficiencies. How quickly are they processing individuals through certain types of, of procedures, certain tasks? Taking these four standard use cases, you can probably think of problems or challenges in a wide range of industries that this can assist them in their business needs, whether it be security and surveillance, whether it be identification of VIPs, whether it be to understand how quickly they're admitting people into, say, concert halls or how quickly people are going through airports. A wide range of opportunities that can be built on top of the NeoFace Watch facial recognition platform, either using the GUI that we present or using its API. So let's play a little game, right? We're here to grow our business, right? And it should be fun. So I would like to see, I'd like to have, let's see, three volunteers, okay? Um, let's see, I, I'm gonna help out here. Is uh, Victor with ATI here? Already on the golf course. Oh, you're here, did I hear that? 
Uh, how about uh, uh, Tammy from American Telephone? Did I hear you volunteer? <laughs> come on up. Victor, Tammy, come on up. Um, anybody else? Does anybody else want to join this very good looking, very intelligent crew? Let's have one more. All right, we got one more. Come on up. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. They have no idea what's coming. All right, Stephen, yes. there we go, with Patel Communications. Victor, we met at one of the demos and spoke a little bit. Tammy, saw you on stage. Uh, congratulations. So, here's the deal. I'm going to end up thinking of an industry vertical, right? And um, one of you are, are going to guess it, because I can tell you're really smart. So which one wants the mic? OK, there we go. Stephen's going to go first. I'm going to stand over here. Now, Stephen, I'm, I'm thinking of an industry, and you're going to guess it, OK? Are you? Let me think harder. Maybe not in Latin. Airport, airline. Industry. Oh my god, yes! That's fantastic, good job, good job. So, let's think about this industry for a moment, right? Airlines, okay. Airports. I'm gonna start off, we're gonna, we're gonna look and see what one of our current case studies, what our, one of our reference customers is doing today, and then we're gonna brainstorm a couple more ideas, because this is about helping you grow your business. So let's see what this customer has done to grow theirs. Well, this customer, this is one of several public references that we have today. Now, this is uh, Rositas Federal, and if there's anybody from Latin America that knows I mispronounced that, do not say anything. Um, what Rositas Federal is doing in Brazil is they are trying to identify individuals who are committing tax evasion. Who are these people that are coming in through the airport repeatedly, maybe with lots of luggage, um, that aren't paying taxes on the cigarettes that they're bringing in? or whatever other contraband might be there. So this is now deployed in 14 airports, and let's let, actually, Brazil, the media, this is not fake news, by the way, Brazil media is gonna go ahead and tell us a little bit about this use case. Começaram hoje em Brasília os testes de um sistema de reconhecimento facial que aeroportos brasileiros vão usar no combate a traficantes e a contrabandistas. Carrinho cheio de mala? Quem vem de fora já sabe, pode ser barrado para inspeção na Receita Federal. Vai depender do desconfiômetro dos fiscais. Mas essa checagem individual e aleatória está chegando ao fim em pelo menos 14 aeroportos do Brasil, graças à tecnologia. Câmeras ligadas a um computador que identifica os rostos de possíveis alvos e cruza com informações da Interpol e da própria... A identificação é feita a partir de qualquer fotografia, a do passaporte ou uma copiada da internet, por exemplo. Na hora do desembarque, a máquina entrega. Quem não tem nada a declarar, também não tem nada a temer. O sistema só vai apontar suspeitos, possíveis traficantes, contrabandistas, gente que tenta passar pelo canal verde com as malas cheias de muamba. No meu caso, eu até posso ser identificado pelo sistema, porque viajo com frequência acima da média, com muitas malas, mas isso não significa culpa automática. Significa apenas que eu vou ser inspecionado e que se tudo estiver legal, a liberação será imediata. Agora o teste para lá de radical, cabelo, point. barba e bigode para ver o que the acontece. Mustache. A máquina não se engana. Em menos de um segundo, a identificação. Mas qual é o segredo desse equipamento? Essa máquina ela trabalha com a medição uh, da geometria do rosto das pessoas. São as proporções faciais que fazem, que, que montam a característica única de cada pessoa, assim como é na, na impressão digital, né? Nós precisamos ser mais precisos, mais técnicos na identificação das pessoas ao do nosso, do nosso processo de seleção e fazer isso de maneira mais rápida possível, perturbando uh, minimamente o fluxo de passageiros. So that's nice. This is a great example of being able to use technology to, you know, enforce laws while also try to be less onerous on the traveling public that is not really of concern. So before we brainstorm a couple ideas about airports, we've got one more that we're going to take a look at here. Now this one I don't have a video for. And speaking of videos, 
don't you think that we could have like paid for a voiceover in English as well? I mean, we got the, the subtitles there. We should, we'll have to work on that one. But Houston Airport, now this is one that you may not be aware of, uh, but they've been talking about it publicly within the, uh, the airport, the airline industry. And they were looking for a way to be able to hold the US federal government accountable for actually working. Something we would all like to do. But in their regards, what they had problems with was CBP, right, Customs and Border Protection, uh, Immigration, and TSA. And they needed to make sure that each of these three departments that work so well together would actually efficiently process travelers through the international arrivals, security, screening, and onto domestic travel process. They tried using Bluetooth. That didn't work. They tried doing beacons, but nobody wanted to go ahead and you know, put something on their phone to, to be tracked. So they came to NEC and said, we have this problem. Let's, let's try this with face recognition. And so now when you enter the International Rivals Hall at, at Houston International, Neoface Watch is automatically capturing every single face, and it's enrolling it into the database. And then when you get to uh, passport control, so immigration, later on you've got your luggage and you're at, at customs, so customs and border patrol, and then finally when you go on to domestic clearance with TSA, we're there matching the faces. And we're doing exactly what I said earlier was one of the features. We're doing flow. We're monitoring how long it takes people to complete this journey. And our business analytics team has built a great dashboard that lets Houston Airport administration see how well the government is functioning in each of those cases minute by minute. And so they can go down there and say, too many people are on break. We need to schedule more people. We need to get these travelers through. So a great use of face recognition today. So now, with the three of you, let's brainstorm another idea. What's one more use case at an airport? And you can sh <laughs> One more case use? Yeah, well, one more use case. One more thing at an airport. How about uh, security in the garages? Security in the garages? Great. Right. I absolutely like it. I used to be a police officer at SeaTac Airport. I can tell you baggage thefts, right? They come in, they park, they run down, they just go grab a bag and they leave. All of those entrance and exit points from the garage, from the public transit, you could have face recognition going there, looking for the individuals who you have picked up previously, because they come back, right? So baggage theft is a, is a great one, absolutely. Um, another one that I think of, right, because we told you you could use face recognition, well, we'll save that idea for the next use case. All right, let's, let's pass the, the microphone down. And we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna think of an industry, and this time I'm not thinking in Latin. Have you got it? Stadium? Stadiums, perfect. <laughs> Good thing you had somebody smart sitting next to you, right? All right, so stadiums. Let's see what NEC is doing in the area of stadiums today. And this time we're going to again go down to Latin America. And we're gonna take a look at uh, the Adenazio Gerodo Stadium. Did I get it right? Can somebody confirm? That's okay, okay. Yeah, that stadium in Medellin, Colombia, um, uh, a great deal of troubles with uh, hooligans and violence in what should be an enjoyable family event. So their video, what they're doing. estadio de Medellín para los partidos de fútbol se presentaban algunas disputas entre las barras bravas de ambos equipos de Medellín, el Independiente Medellín y el Atlético Nacional. Tuvo que tomarse la medida en años anteriores de solamente permitir el ingreso de una de las dos barras y una de las dos hinchadas, solamente la del equipo local, por problemas de violencia y problemas que se presentaban por la falta de mecanismos para poder controlar las actividades al interior del estadio. At full capacity, the stadium can seat up to 40,000 spectators. It is a great challenge 
to screen that many people going in and out of multiple exit and entry points. It was very important for us to provide an efficient and robust security solution for our clients. Face recognition is not a new technology. However, stadiums and public places need faster, more accurate face recognition than normally found in systems on the market today. NEC's Neoface Watch is the fastest, most accurate face recognition system on the market, able to handle millions of images per second with a very low miss rate. It was designed to use the stadium's existing infrastructure as far as possible. Currently, the stadium has 170 cameras. Of these, 50 cameras are located at the entrances, and 25 higher resolution cameras are used for the grandstand. These are all connected to the control room operated by the Metropolitan Police. The system is able to identify individuals against a database of known troublemakers. People with a history of violence will be excluded from the stadium. The key to this technology is the very accurate face recognition algorithm. The objective of this system is to provide a trouble-free, safe environment for everybody to enjoy. La tecnología instalada en este momento para los diferentes partidos de fútbol en el Estadio Atanasio Girardot eh, ha colaborado en un sentido muy positivo. Hoy en el estadio podemos albergar las hinchadas y las barras, tanto del equipo local como del equipo visitante, sin que se presente ningún acto de violencia gracias al control que se establece al ingreso por la identificación facial que hacemos de cada una de las personas que está al interior del estadio y también en las tribunas porque podemos ejercer este mismo control y saber qué actividades se están desarrollando en cada una de las tribunas. Es de aclarar que el estadio de Medellín no tiene ninguna barrera entre el público y el escenario donde se desarrolla el espectáculo gracias a la tecnología que hemos implementado. So pretty cool that there at the stadium, every single individual has their face enrolled in the system before they go in to the stadium. Every single person that buys a ticket gets enrolled, and that way, if something does occur, they can go back and do the face recognition and see who happened to be involved. And if they can't, they get to enroll those people into the system anyway, and they're going to stop them. They're going to blacklist them. They're not coming into the stadium again. So a great use of face recognition today. Now, at stadiums, can we come up with another use case? What do you, what do you think, Victor? Uh, I would say contractors coming in and out of the stadium. I love it. I love it. It's, I don't know where you heard that one before, but yeah, it's a, it's a great one, all right? You think about all these food and beverage vendors, right? Okay. Do you need them at every single event? No, you probably have people that are working some days and not other days, right? Well, what happens when Lady Gaga plays, right? I know that it's a problem that some of those food and bev beverage vendors that aren't working are showing up with their employee badge at the back door. They're coming in and they're taking the seats that we should be getting to go see Lady Gaga, right? So that's another use case that we've heard from stadiums where they need to monitor their staff and make sure that the people that are showing up are actually the people that are scheduled to be there. And even more so, when you're doing pre-employment screening, making sure that this staff person, which is one of the vendor you know, franchises that are there, they're actually not employees of the, the stadium operator. They haven't been fired from another vendor that's there, maybe Aramark and, and somebody else, right? And they're just jumping from one vendor to another. Well, if you've been fired, you're fired, all right? So with that, let's keep the microphone with you, Victor. We're gonna do one more here. Well, not one more, but one more for Victor. And I'm gonna start thinking, obviously Victor had trouble with Latin, so we'll see here. I'm gonna go with casino. Ah, fantastic. Ah, of course. We've got Jason from, uh, from product management who's covering the backs for all of us here. So thank you, Jason. <laughs> casinos, casinos. Uh, now this one, this is a brand new use case. This is a brand new uh, reference customer 
Uh, they just came out in March of this year. I'll tell you, it's Merit Casinos. They're based in Cyprus, that little island over there around the Mediterranean where no funny money, no dark money is transiting through at all. They, they have casinos there. Um, they actually decided to do a proof of concept. And within the first three days of their proof of concept, they already started nabbing people that were on their blacklist, right? I mean, they're just trialing the software and they're actually getting operational benefits out of it. They were so pleased that before the end of their proof of concept, they went ahead and signed up uh, Neoface Watch for five more casinos. So their, their entire casino um, uh, chain is now using face recognition to help combat some of the security issues, some of the card counters, some of the problem gamblers, those things that take the fun out of gambling, like losing. That's my problem with gambling. Uh, so what about it? What's another, uh, another use case maybe for casinos? Taking money at the table like someone? Sure, sure. I mean, you know, it, it's exactly that. Tracking winners, you know, who are the VIPs? D did the VIP come back in the front door? Or is it that guy that's winning lots that came back in the front door? Let's get him a few more drinks and see if he can still focus, right? What are ways that you can identify individuals that either need um, uh, exceptional service or concerns? So a couple ideas there. We're going to do this one last time. You can pass the microphone down to Tammy now. And I'm going to think hard again on this one. Thinking. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thinking. Any ideas? Open to anything. Open to anything. I love that because it's, this is about growing your business, right? We should be open to any of these ideas, right? We've talked about security. We've talked about VIPs. We've talked about operational efficiencies. This last customer, I am so bummed. We do not have the case study ready yet, so I'm still under NDA. I can't tell you about them specifically, but I can tell you that they have a do not admit watch list. People that have proven to be problems previously that they don't want to have come back in on game day to that environment, right? Because they want to provide safe, secure, and enjoyable environment for people when they come out for game day. So let's think of any different industry. Let's come up with something new. Hospi well, new? Hospitality. Yeah. What would we do with uh, face recognition for hospitality? VIP. VIPs, a good one. Security. Security. I can see this in LA, right? The paparazzi. Well, first off, if I've got a nice hotel, I want to have like the Chris Pratt's, the Angelina Jolie's, the uh, Felicity, I can't remember her last name from, from the new Star Wars, right? Um, I want those people coming in, but they don't want to be harassed. They don't want paparazzi following them everywhere. So how about you load the paparazzi into your system and that way you can keep people from coming onto your property that might be making it less enjoyable for the people you really do want there. So a great idea there as well. So let's give a round of applause to uh, our volunteers. Thank you very much. Tammy's like, take, take the mic, take the mic. Thank you. All right. So we've had a little bit of fun and I know that I'm getting dangerously close to lunch and tea time. So we're going to, uh, to move on here real quick. Um, what are some of the things that these early adopters, now here's where we really help you focus in on how do I actually grow my business today, Eric, all right? So of the 200 customers that have signed up and have purchased today, what are some of the things that, are, uh, that they share in common? The first thing is, one, they are technically um, uh, uh, early adopters, right? The other thing is they tend to be places where sizable numbers of individuals gather or transit through. So they have a lot of people coming and going, more than what that security guard can, can monitor on his own. The other thing, and this is really important for you to, to, to think about um, focusing the time of your sales reps. Is this potential opportunity you're looking at? Do they know what the cost of security is to them? Do they know what the cost of losses related to, say, shoplifting are? Can they actually enumerate that? Um, what will operational efficiencies do for their bottom line, right? Do they have a value attached with that? Or what does unparalleled customer service mean to them, right? 
Look for those opportunities that they have actually understood what the costs and the savings are, and they can equate that for an ROI. It's very, very important. The next thing is these customers are going to have a big investment in video and surveillance today. If they don't have security cameras today, they're not going to be people that are going to shell out the type of money that face recognition commands, the type of revenues you're going to be able to, to generate. And the really nice thing is, even though they have this dense and complex video network already, what you're selling does not replace it at all. All it does is add value. They do not have to get rid of their VMS. They do not have to get rid of their cameras. They don't have to make big changes to enabling network bandwidth, et cetera. Neoface Watch sits alongside this technology and adds greater value to the investments they're already making. Now, the last thing to, to be aware of, and we have to, you know, we have to say this because it's, it's a reality, there are regulations that impact the use of face recognition. So the other thing that these customers share in common is they operate in locations where society generally has a balanced view of privacy, security, and safety. And so you need to consider that because every single state has different laws regarding privacy, and they may or may not impact the use of face recognition in one way or another. Um, in every state, we can use face recognition. It's just how it's deployed. So that's one of the things that you should should do when you are starting to look at this. So now, are you a video management uh, service provider today? Are you a VMS system integrator, right? If you are, you already have a lot of knowledge about selection of cameras, placement, resolutions, frame rates, bandwidths, the, the supporting use cases that make the value or the investment uh, uh, ROI work out. If not, that doesn't necessarily mean the game's over, right? What you need to do is identify who is that SI at your target customer. There's no reason why you can't collaborate with them today, right? You can be the, uh, the seller of the technology. They could end up uh, having some professional services, or at least work with them. I'll tell you, NEC today, those 200 customers we have, every single one of them had a VMS dealer already in place. We've had to collaborate on the sale of this over 200 times ourselves. So if we can do it, you can as well. So no problem there. The next thing, we mentioned again, I'm not gonna beat the dead horse, look at the privacy regulations. The nice thing is, is you can deploy cameras to either have a wide view and get anybody walking by, or you can have cameras deployed with a very narrow view and only capture the faces of people who are walking right up to it because they want to be recognized. That's not a privacy concern. Okay? So there's many different things that you can do, but do take a look and see what those are in, in your, uh, your region. And then lastly, start learning about the enabling technologies for NeoFace Watch. Because I mentioned it earlier, NeoFace Watch is an open platform. We integrate with a number of different technologies to make sure that this is the most stable, the most reliable, the most extensible platform available to you. And you've seen some of that extensibility in our own innovation uh, demos over there. Right out of the box, NeoFace Watch will do SMS alerts, and it'll do an email alert, and it'll pop up on a mobile device. But our own guys were innovating, and they did that text-to-speech conversion. So now with, with NEC's UC platform, you can actually send out an audio broadcast with all the pertinent information in it itself. So great way to extend it there. Some of those are um, Cassandra, Docker, Rabbit NQ, and I forgot the name of this one that has a pelican as the logo, but um, we're working on bringing base, technol or base uh, uh, training and information together for you so you can start learning this. So NeoFace Watch version four is coming out this summer. Uh, in preparations for this, what you should begin doing is working with your account managers, starting to build your business plan to grow your business. Who are your potential low-hanging fruits? Who are those potential targets that meet some of the common use cases you heard about today? Um, what are the size of systems? What are their use cases? What are the training that you need? What skills do you already have within your companies? How can you extend and add even more value? Start talking with your account managers about these things because I tell you, we're bringing this out to dealers for the first time here in North America. And we're bringing this program to being right now as we're speaking. So we have the technical training that's coming. We have certification process that's being developed. 
We have the demo systems that we can get out to you, and we already have collateral available for you to help start those conversations with your target customers today and help some of that brainstorming of use cases. So with that, I want to thank you for your time today. I want to encourage you to talk to your account managers about how you can use NeoFace Watch as a facial recognition platform to help grow your business in the future. And with that, thank you very much.